Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. A little double upload situation today, alright? We are talking FIFA 21 because there's a lot of stuff that happened today with the EA Play uh, and the EA Live event uh, about FIFA 21. Uh, kind of just building the hype for the next game of FIFA. There's a lot of information that came out today as well that we can actually learn from, read into, and kind of draw some conclusions from already. Um... Some surprising ones as well, a actual later release date for FIFA 21, which is going to be interesting. And I think a lot of this stuff from a hardcore FIFA user base is going to be something that we find a bit uh, underwhelming. Um, but I got to say this for starters, uh, I got to say this for starters, with, with these early, um, you know, when they just tease the game right off the bat, when they tell us like, hey, this game, this is FIFA 21, this is like the trailer, watch this. Like we never see and we never get a lot of information right away. They always tell us, hey, this is what we're gonna do. And then down the, the line a little bit later, they give us the actual like info that we really, really, really wanna know. So right now, this is just very surface level info from EA, uh, but there's still some stuff that we can learn from this. And that's what I wanna talk about in today's video, uh, especially FIFA 21 being delayed and, and being later uh, than it was in previous years. But one thing we can confirm already, we know the ones to watch card design. That's a pretty sick card design. Starting off FIFA 21 with that card design is actually pretty cool uh, because this is the pre-order. You get the OTW card involved with there. They're already kind of um, promoing the pre-order and stuff like that. You're going to see this for a while. You're going to have a lot of time to pre-order the game. Don't worry about doing it now. Uh, but a lot of the next gen console stuff is what they're pushing. You can see in this little infomercial here, feel next level in FIFA 21 with a PS5 and Xbox Series X with new technology that takes the world game, the world's game from visual to visceral. And I'm not actually going to watch the trailer. You can watch that for yourself if you want to. Um, but I'm not super impressed with it, to be honest with you. It's just, you know, a, one of those trailers that comes out way, way, way too early before the game is actually going to come out. So the biggest thing I want to talk about today is the release date, right? Because EA gave us a lot of information in this FAQ section, and I want to talk about that, as well as the dual entitlement uh, with the PS4 to PS5, Xbox One to Xbox Series X. I want to talk about that with you guys as well. But this is the big thing today, right? When is FIFA 21 coming out on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? We'll have more information to share about this later. Okay, whatever. Uh, that kind of just depends upon when the, the PlayStation 5 and the Series X come out themselves. But this is the biggest information. When is FIFA 21 coming out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC? FIFA 21 will launch worldwide on October 9th. October 9th is the release date for FIFA 21, which is actually two weeks later than the original start for FIFA. Usually, FIFA starts like the, the second to last week or last week of September. So this is about two weeks later. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that is still hanging in the balance. Earlier this year, EA told us that FIFA was not going to be delayed. And I mean, technically two weeks, that's not that big of an issue in my opinion. Uh, I'm not too like bent out of shape about this being delayed two weeks. Um, and of course, EA has to get their football game out. Uh, the thing that I'm worried about is just the stuff that we know about this game already and uh, just that the engine is going to be the same, the Frostbite engine is going to be the same, and, and more stuff that we'll talk about later. But this is the biggest news, that FIFA 21 is going to be delayed a couple of weeks. Uh, if you pre-order, you'll get it three days early, and it looks like they're doing the EA Access and Origin Access again for the uh, the one-week early Play First trials, which you will usually get, like what is it, like a 10-hour trial access. So we'll be talking about that sort of stuff, and it's going to be a little bit later this year, a couple weeks later than normal, so that is just something um, that's kind of interesting. They also promote the upcoming feature news, and, and this is the stuff that we really need to be worried about because this is the stuff that matters. So basically, they said, coming in August, uh, and, and this is what they did last year, they're going to be giving us some dates where they're going to go like, it's going to be a couple times a week and then they'll spread it out. They're going to specifically focus in on gameplay, career mode, Volta, Pro Clubs, and then finally FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. Um, it, it, what they'll focus on in different like um, segments, where they'll do shows, where they'll do presentations and release videos and stuff like that. So that's what we have looking uh, look to look forward to in the month of August 
is this information coming on FIFA 21. So it's kind of like they tease us with the FIFA 21 stuff right now. They show us a trailer. They show us some graphics. Maybe give us some info, especially this year with, with the new consoles. Give us some info on that. And then we're kind of left in the dark, honestly. We're really left in the dark for like two months. Uh, from now until August, we're really not going to know much. Uh, unless there's some other games conferences that are going to actually happen. Uh, we probably won't hear much or know much else about FIFA 21 until then. But I do want to talk about the dual entitlement stuff because this is also pretty interesting uh, coming from EA Sports. And this is, I think, similar to what they did from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One, PS3 to PS4, and likewise. But they're really, really, really pushing... The, uh, they're really pushing the image here on the new innovations unlocked by the new consoles. Blazing fast load times, deferred lighting and rendering, enhanced animation technology, off the ball humanization, uh, you know, feeling next level every time you step on the pitch. Yeah, we'll just leave that there and because, yeah, whatever. Anyways, for FIFA 21, this is the most important information. We are partnering with Sony and Microsoft to offer you a dual entitlement, meaning you won't need to buy FIFA 21 twice to upgrade your copy of the game from PS4 to PS5. But that is not really new information. We figured that that was going to be what they would do with this game uh, and because that's what they did last time around. And that's just kind of like what you do because, you know, EA knows this. We all know this. EA Sports does not make... Uh, a majority of their money on FIFA Ultimate Team or FIFA in general from game sales. They make most of their money from in-game transactions, microtransactions, aka FIFA points, and however much money they make from like the Volta shop, which is probably not much. But it's FIFA points inside of Ultimate Team is what they make. So basically, the dual entitlement is if you buy the game on PS4, you will be able to upgrade it on or do download it on your PS5 or Xbox One to Series X at no extra cost, which is cool. Thank you, EA, we like that. Um, how do I make sure I benefit from this? Basically, if you purchase the game, you'll be able to upgrade since you have the corresponding new generation code at no cost uh, on your console until the launch of FIFA 22, you will be able to download it. I'm guessing that is like linked to your account when you like so sign into your, your PSN or to your Xbox account. You kind of have that, your email and your password and you have games that you buy with that account. So if you buy FIFA on the PlayStation 4, when the PS5 comes out, you you load up, you sign into your account, and FIFA should show like in the download section, basically. I think that's how it works um, to download. I think that's how it should go. You shouldn't have to get a code from EA. It should just be there and ready to go once you get that new console. Um, and this is also a pretty interesting question. Do I have to purchase FIFA 21 digitally to benefit from dual entitlement? So this states here, the physical copy of FIFA 21 on PS4 also includes your entitlement to download and play the PS5 version of the game. Same thing with the Xbox to the X, one to the X. So you'll be able to upgrade via dual entitlement if you purchase a next-gen console with a disc drive. If you intend to buy a discless next console, next generation console, you will need to purchase FIFA 21 digitally to take advantage of dual entitlement offer as the physical discs cannot currently be used to upgrade to discless consoles. So if you were gonna buy the physical disc, you were gonna to go to like a midnight release for FIFA 21 and buy the actual hard copy of the game just so that you can get the satisfa satisfaction of tearing that disc up at a later point during the year when FIFA ticks you off. I know some of you guys do that. You can't really do that this year unless you're gonna buy the game again digitally if you upgrade to the new console. So that is something to take note of. If you're somebody who buys the game on a disc, you're going to make sure that if you buy a next-gen console, which I don't even know if these consoles have, like the PS5 or the Xbox Series 1X, I'm not following those consoles a bunch. Um, I don't know if they have disk drives or not, or if they have multiple versions that do and don't have it, but um, that is something you have to take in consideration if you are somebody who buys a disk for FIFA. And then, yes, all the progress that you make or acquire uh, will transfer, right? As well as, well as Volta, uh, Seasons... And no, it's just Volta as well as progression in Volta will transfer from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. So this is a big thing as well. If you're playing Ultimate Team, you start the year on PS4 and you're like, yo, I want to get a PS5. If you digitally download the game or if you d get a disc and you can put that disc into the PS5, then you sign in with your account, you'll be able to download everything and it will just basically, everything is tied to your account, right? Everything is just tied to your email that you have created your PSN ID with or your Xbox ID. It's all created and tied to that. So 
you will be able to download and have all your progress saved and move forward. So it looks like Ultimate Team and Volta will go forward. But Online Seasons Co-op Career Mode Pro Clubs will be specific to the console you are playing on and won't transfer between consoles. So if you're somebody who is going to be getting the new uh, Xbox or the new PlayStation and you grind a lot of career mode, online seasons, co-op, or pro clubs, I'm really interested to see what pro clubs is like. I mean, not that a lot of people play pro clubs right off the bat, especially if you play ultimate team and then you play pro clubs on the side, but pro clubs could look really interesting this year and you might have trouble like matchmaking, you know, if you're on the PlayStation 4 or PS5 in kind of those early stages until later in the year when more and more people start to acquire that PS5 it could get kind of interesting uh, with the amount of people that start pro clubs on PS4 that will still be playing on PS4 and that will be playing on like PS5 or Xbox One to Xbox Series X. Just a thought there. Uh, and then yes, this again talks about the digital copies and the non-digital copies. Um, and then also once I upgrade, can I go back? So for whatever reason, you yes, you could go back if you want to. Um, and... You cannot go from Xbox One to PlayStation 5. You cannot go from Xbox or PlayStation to Xbox. It does not work like that. It only goes from platform to platform. And just a lot of other questions here about the discs and all the uh, questions about that um, and whatever. So uh, I want to click on this, uh, the field next level. Actually, no, I don't. I'm gonna I don't want to look at that. No, thanks. That's just the same stuff that we looked at before. But Basically, that is what I want to cover today in the video as I want to talk about the dual entitlement and I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that we know about FIFA. We really just don't know a lot yet. We know they're going to be using the Frostbite engine again based on some of the stuff that we saw in some of those videos. Um, and uh, basically, that's the same engine that we have uh, on FIFA already. So that is something that is really not new. That is something that is really not new. It's the same engine that we've had in FIFA since FIFA 17. Uh, and basically, to sum it up, FIFA's coming out two weeks later than normal. There's no cross-platform play. They didn't talk about any cross-platform between the Xbox and the PlayStation playing together. Uh, the same engine, the same servers, which they are improving. Uh, and the actual in-game content, they also said this during the live stream, the in-game content on FIFA this year will depend on the COVID situation so stuff that's going on with COVID-19 the coronavirus um, the in-game content and the promos with team of the weeks and other events like the UCL and stuff like that we might see some interesting promos at the start of the year that are based off of um, maybe non real life events like they might have to just start boosting some cards to try to make some money in their game you know they're going to try to make some money because it's foot with the microtransactions. So like an ultimate screen promo is something that they could still run uh, earlier on in foot. They could still run ones to watch. Um, but it's going to be interesting, like with Team of the Knockout stage, if whatever the Champions League situation is at, we might not be starting the new season of Champions League yet or the new, the new tournament at that time. Who knows, right? This is something that's just kind of evolving and happening uh, as we continue to go through the COVID process. So a lot of question marks around the content. Uh, but honestly, not a lot of info that we learned today from the FIFA event. Seriously, not a lot of info, but how much can you expect, right? How much do you really expect from an event that is this far away from the launch? Um, we're really going to be left in the dark now and not hear much for the next two months. Uh, EA did talk about some other really cool things they're doing with like EA Skate. I know a lot of people are pumped about that. Apex Legends and other their other games, there was some hype around those. But at least for FIFA, we, we still are going to be waiting until that August time frame when we see uh, the more in-depth stuff and we'll be covering that stuff appropriately as it does come out But I wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of what happened today uh, in terms of the EA event if you didn't watch it uh, Which I actually didn't I just went on and re read all the pages and and looked at some clips and stuff of what happened So that's just kind of the info that we got today If you did enjoy it smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new It's been Nate the foot accountant catch you guys later. Peace out <laughs>